Don't forget about the PP tips. Shit. Fuck it. Do it live. Rise and shine, motherfuckers. I am your host, Stimulator, and this is the fucking news. Welcome, everybody. Throughout the never-ending media system of the past year, one topic has consistently dominated the American 24-hour cable news cycle. Trump, Russia, possible collusion. Trump, Russia, possible collusion. Trump, Russian bot collusion. Trump, Russia, Russian collusion. And a big fucking reason for this has been the motherfucking Fed's ongoing investigation into possible collusion between Russia and the Trump campaign. Fake news. Which, let's be fucking real, is just a polite phrase that pundits throw around to make shit sound mutual. When what's really being alleged is that Putin is straight up blackmailing the Donald using a video of an erotic fucking piss party he orchestrated with two escorts in the presidential suite of the Moscow Ritz Carlton last time he was in town to judge a Miss Universe contest. But while the idea of Putin sitting on a hidden camera footage of the orange one getting a liquid bronze finish would certainly explain a few things. I can taste the bubbles. Even that wouldn't be enough to change the fact that Russia and the West have long been and continue to be bitter geopolitical rivals. And last week, millennials who've learned about the Cold War through watching episodes of The Americans and reruns of Rocky IV I must got an IRL history lesson when a former KGB operative and his daughter were poisoned with a military grave nerve agent in the English town of Salisbury. In the wake of the attack, which seen straight out of a fucking James Bond movie, Western states responded in unison by putting over 120 alleged Russian spooks on planes back to Moscow. And while there's currently no hard evidence that they're responsible, this wouldn't be the first time Russia pulls shit like this. In case you forgot, back in 2006, they off former FSB agent Alexander Litvinenko. No, 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 let's break it down. Litvinenko. In London, by spiking his tea with a radioactive isotope known as polonium-210, otherwise known as vitamin E. <laughs> this time around, while Democrats and Republican hawks have been quick to point the finger at Putin, I think Putin was behind this, Mr. President? Uh, it looks like it. Russian scum! Tankies have unsurprisingly jumped to Mother Russia's defense. The reality is, Russia has every right to be offended here. I mean, talk about a rush to judgment. Perhaps maybe you might be a better spokesman for the Russian government. I'm available. I mean, I've already volunteered my wife and I to go to the World Cup. People say you are already. Once again, putting themselves on the same side of defense as Trump's diehard base of right-wing Russia skeptics. Why would the Russians do this? The toilets are overflowing in Moscow. They're trying to hold their crap together from George Soros and the globalists trying to raid him. But putting the sinister motives of the warmongers in Washington aside, it's important to point out that Russia as a country is totally fucked. Members of the girl band Pussy Riot were attacked by Russia's voluntary police force, the Cossacks. As Putin's recent balls out crooked landslide re-election made crystal fucking clear, Russia is a motherfucking authoritarian plutocracy in which everyone from the highest oligarch down to the lowest beat cup is corrupt as shit. And when the state intelligence services aren't cranking out weaponized fucking memes, they're torturing and laying bullshit charges on anarchists and anti-fascists. Beginning last October, members of the FSB arrested six anti-fascists in the Russian city of Penza, planted explosives and weapons on them, and brutally tortured them with beatings and electrical shocks into signing confessions, admitting that they were part of an obviously fake terrorist group known as The Network. This was followed up by two more arrests in St. Petersburg in January, in which similarly vicious attacks were used to produce more false confessions. All in all, eight anti-fascists are currently being held in pre-trial detention or house arrest and are facing the prospect of fixed trials and long prison sentences. In the months that have followed, anarchists from around the world have carried out a series of solidarity actions, but more support is needed, because while Russia and the West might bicker on the world stage, at the end of the day, all states are keen to learn from one another when it comes to the innovation of new tactics and strategies of repression. And while it may seem far-fetched that this type of shit could happen in the supposedly liberal democracies of the West, reaction is on the rise. 
And don't forget who the president of the United fucking snakes is. Torture works, okay, folks? Torture, you know, I have these guys. Torture doesn't work. Believe me, it works. And that's all the fucking news for this week. As always, if you want to see me talk more shit, shoot me some taco money at sub.media slash donate. And check me out on all your favorite corporate brainwashing and mass surveillance platforms. Just search Stimulator. Hasta la pasta, compañeras.